Yeah, the first thing you're going to notice about this video is, um, well, the obvious part right here is the sticker on my forehead, which I've been wearing all day, if you guys can't really see from the close distance. Um, long story short, I got vaccinated. Um, so, pretty much, it's a painless, but the side effects are kind of starting to kick in a little bit, so tomorrow I'm going to be uh, out of commission, so... I'm gonna make this a quick video, hopefully quick. Um, if not, then well, shit out of luck. Um, so, anyway, <clears throat> before we get started, <clears throat> um, we have a situation in Fort Lauderdale. Um, what's happening was there has been a lawsuit going up against Inter Miami, and it's had a lot to do with the name, the Inter Miami, because the famous name from out over Europe into Milan, they felt MLS kind of feels like the our trade the trademark is from them, and we're kind of stealing it, and it's kind of like in the lawsuit, kind of some bullshit. So while that's being under investigation, um, also Beckham kind of said no, we're not changing the name. So that's kind of like kind of under investigation. So speaking of investigation, we had, there's another situation revolving the same thing, um, and that is my Tweety. Uh, we got him from the tan deal from uh, Juventus, along with Gonzalo Higuain. And right there, it's being investigated about if he was a a legal signing, if or if it's an illegal signing. Did we get away with it? I don't know. We don't know. We don't know if any of this was true. But if we did get caught from the tan deal, we're probably gonna lose a draft pick or two, which that's probably the best case scenario. Um, or we get fined. Let's hope we don't get fined because uh, Beckham has too much money. So no one MLS, no one MLS in regarding sports, um, they're probably going to penalize us. And you know it's amazing how the same thing happened with other teams like LA, where um, they got someone illegally off a tan deal and they get away with it because you know it's LA. They get away with a lot of things. For Miami, we're probably not going to get away with it because. Sports and other teams have been pretty inconsistent and tarred up against us. We've been disrespected time and time and time again. We are not going to be standing up this respect any longer. It's time we step up, we talk as a community, and stop giving us the bullshit that we don't deserve. It's terrible. So That's the situation in Inter-Miami in Fort Lauderdale. So that is what's going on right now. So for the recap, we're gonna talk about, um, we're, we're first things first, is we're gonna talk about the hurricanes. And um, uh, hurricanes um, from the Tuesday and the Wednesday and the Thursday, they were in a New York ACC tournament. Um, they were really good games. And we made it to the quarterfinals, and unfortunately, we lost to Georgia Tech. And so, so congratulations to Georgia, to Georgia Tech. And uh, we go we go watch uh, Georgia Tech. They actually won the ACC tournament, the New York Life ACC tournament. <coughs> they beat, uh, <coughs> oh excuse me, they beat Florida State for it. So that's crazy. Um, the the reason why they made it to the finals anyway was because of the fact that the semifinals was uncontested against Virginia. So, but enough of Georgia Tech. Um, that's what ended up happening. Miami Hurricanes didn't make it to the finals. So it's while well, it's an unfortunate ending, like we gotta we gotta give it the thoughts the thoughts for uh, Miami Hurricanes. It was a good season. Um, it not the great season that we were looking for but still a pretty darn good season. Um, so we also have college baseball. So college baseball is up and um, I'm gonna check right now, see if the Miami Hurricanes were actually involved, which I have to say, yeah, they are. So let's, uh, while I get up Miami Hurricanes, I am at Miami Hurricanes. Um, there we are, Miami number eight. They are now 12 of 4. 
for the men's uh, baseball for NCAA. Really cool. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to talk all about the, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to talk all about the, uh, baseball, but speaking of baseball, let's talk about baseball real quick as we are on the topic of baseball. Uh, while it's preseason, um, it's still pretty good. Another tie and, um, another, actually there are a couple of ties this week. Uh, one, two, three, four, four ties in a row, and we won against the Mets on that set on the Friday. Yesterday, we uh, lost to the Cardinals, and despite all that, we're still in second. Only the Yankees are on top, which is expected. Um, so Marlins are having a pretty good season, and I was watching the Heat game today. Pretty much all of South Florida is white hot. You know, our the Miami region... It's the hottest sports city in the country right now. What are these, you know, hopefully all of them, they're going to make it to the playoffs. And, you know, it's it's still a darn shame the Dolphins didn't make it. They're going to be left out if they continue to play like this. Now, with that being said, we don't know what Inter-Miami holds. But anyway, let's talk about the Panthers. And we're going to start with the um, Tuesday, which is... The game against Columbus in Columbus, Ohio. So right away, uh, Florida comes on top. Uh, Jahu Lameko with one nothing in the first period. Patrick Hornquist with a two nothing goal in the power play. Michael Delzato with two one. Owen Tippett with the power play goal to make a three one. Uh, Oliver Borkstrand with four two or three two. And Carter Vallehi. Game sealer from the empty net. It's 4-2. <clears throat> Bingo. So, <clears throat> pretty good game. Uh, Bobrovsky has actually saved 40 shots, which is really good. And um, Patrick Hornquist and uh, Owen Tippett were both responsible for giving us on top of the power play. Um, so, this game I wanted to talk about. I really, really want to talk about it as, you know, with these decisions to make with these Miami winners of the week, this was a tough, tough decision against for the Heat and for the Panthers. For me, it's a tie. <laughs> I think, well, for me, this week is the Heat winner, but Florida Panthers were very, very close. They are very close to becoming winner of the week, but Miami Heat, is Miami Heat is just the winner. So, but this game I want to talk about, <clears throat> and it's a game against Columbus on a Thursday. So, Oliver uh, Borstrand, uh, Borstrand, one nothing Columbus. Oliver Borstrand again with power play, well, not power play, but second goal of the game. So, um. So that so right away two nothing Columbus, and the end of the first near the end of the first period, Patrick Hornquist to make it two one to put Florida on the board. Now, that was all in the second period. Third period, this is where it gets real. Patrick Lane for Columbus three one, and Max Domi Domi make it four one. Now at that time, I thought this is it. This is game set and match. I was ready to watch to get it to. Um, turn off, but I didn't do that because um, something tells me they might come back. So Ryan Lum Ryan Lumberg with his first career goal, first NHL goal of his career to make it four two, and that was a pretty interesting goal. You may ask me. And uh, six minutes later, Owen Tippett to make it three four Columbus. So maybe there was a little slight of hope. Well. We can all thank the one and great savior of the team, Alexander Mofo Barkov, to tie the game 4-4. We were down 4-1. And man, mind you, I was streaming when this is happening. I was multitasking a playing Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U and watching the game. <laughs> I was celebrating on stream. It's a shame that it won't let me 
save the stream, uh, the broadcast on Twitch. So that was it. 4-4. Uh, four, four. That game went to overtime. And uh, the assist from Aaron Ekblad and John Derhubido, Frank Vatrana once again, game-winning goal for Florida Panthers to win the game 5 for a huge, huge win and a huge steal, man, for the say the least. We won it in Columbus. We swept it in Columbus. That was a great win, and I will never forget it. And Florida Panthers continued their winning ways back to Florida when they were wearing their retro uniforms, the one one with the Panthers coming right at you. So they were wearing, they were wearing something like that, and there was also something else that was happening. So um, they were on a road trip. And, um, during their road trip, um, a one player that we have to keep in mind for the Florida Panthers, Aaron Eggblad. Um, last, last week when they were playing against Nashville, um, Aaron Eggblad actually scores his 1,000th goal. And that was against Nashville. And... That was last Saturday, but because they could, because they were on the road, they weren't able to give them like some memorial type. So they have to wait until, um, they have to wait until like they have to go back to sunrise. And there was a celebration with uh, Aaron Eckblad at the beginning of this game last night. It was a great celebration. I I, lo I watched it on on ESPN Plus. And Aaron Eckblad is one of the greatest players out there right now. You know, um, Aaron Eckblad, you know, with him, you got to take into consideration that he might be one of the all-time, not the all-time greats, but one of the best players right now with, um, with the Florida Panthers and maybe around the, the Hockey League. So he's well-respected. Um, he's a well-respected guy. Um Pretty much. Don't don't underestimate him. Do not underestimate Aaron Eckblad. So anyway, back to back to the recap. Chicago, the the the, the team that we played against early. So nothing happened in the first period, but in the second period, it didn't take long for Brandon Hagel for the Chicago to score, and Alexander Barkov responds right away. A few minutes later, to make it 1 1, Connor, uh, Carter Farlehi, 2 1, and Frank Vachano, 3 1, second period. Alexander Barkov with another goal, two goals, and Adam Buckquist with 2 4 from the empty net. Well, not from the empty net, but, there was, but they had an empty net situation. So, Florida Panthers continuing their winning ways. And when I look at the standings the other day, um, they were better than the Islanders, but the Islanders were better today. So the Islanders are right now holding the best team of hockey right now. So we got to catch up to them and Tampa. Um, I was watching the Islander game today, and uh, they were saved by an offside call because they were actually in overtime against New Jersey, and they they actually lost the game, but New Jersey with really unlucky that they were really bad this season. They were called for offside for you know it was a close call, so the Islanders really got away with it. Really got away with it. So I'm not trying to disrespect, but that's what I that's what how I felt. They got away with it. Finally, winner of the week, Miami Heat. What else could I say? Uh, so. This is something new. Miami Heat was actually wearing the yellow the yellow outfits against Orlando, you know, the place where I grew up. Uh, Orlando Magic versus Miami Heat, the rematch of the of the um, opening of the opener. Rem remember, we lost against Orlando, so good opportunity for some revenge. Uh, Aminu, nothing. Gordon nine. Bacon twenty one. 
Vukovic, 24, and Carter Williams, 17. Miami, Olenek, 20, Jimmy Butler, 27. Akpala, 5, Nunn, 13, and Robinson, 9. So we were playing without Bam Adebayo, man, mind you. Bam Adebayo has something going on with his knee, his knee uh, tendinitis. So wish him a speedy recovery. So this is the pattern I see. So this is a great, this is a good start for the second half for Miami basketball. Miami Heat, all season long, they were pulling off the strains in the fourth quarter. Every game, fourth quarter, they're they're on they're on fire. Butler with some crazy and ones and dunks. Mind you. Um, so this is um, this became a dunking contest and a good contest in general. I wish I was there for it. So um, this was a good game to watch and the most memorable. Actually, speaking of speaking of more most memorable. Next. Oh, my kitty. Oh my gosh, <laughs> my cat. Anyway, uh, this game. This game is something special to talk about. So, before we talk about this game, they're playing against Chicago, in Chicago. So after the game against Orlando, they had to fly right away to Chicago. It was a 9 p.m. Eastern kickoff, or tip-off, not kickoff, what the f Anyway, Olenek, nine points, Jimmy Butler, 28, Akpala, four, Nunn, 10, and Robinson, 15. For Chicago, Markinen, 20, Williams, three. Carter Jr., uh, four. White, eight. And Levine, 30. 30 points for uh, Zach Levine. So, great player for uh, Chicago. This game was historic. Let me tell you why. One man. One man only. Gordon Dragic. He scored 20 points in the fourth quarter off the bench 25 in the second half he broke a record i forgot what record it was but he broke some record like 23 points or something that record is all is all his remember not, this doesn't happen too often but when it does it's historic the last player to score this many points in the fourth quarter the the most he, he has the record so far with 24 in the fourth quarter in the Heat's franchise history. Dwayne Wade. He scored 24 points off in the fourth quarter twice. 24 points in the fourth quarter twice. Gordon was very close to tying or coming close to that record. He was a monster dragon in the fourth quarter. A monster Gordon Dragic is the player of that game. And he single-handedly took down Chicago Bulls in the fourth quarter. He scored 20 points in the fourth quarter alone, and the rest of the team scored 11. Think about this math. Fourth quarter, 20 points for Gordon Dragic alone. And the rest of the team, 11 points. And with 11 points add-on from 20 points, Chicago was still outscored by nine. Think about that math. And finally, today, um, the close, close game to go back in Amway against the Magic. Um, there was a history made from the other side. We'll talk about that in a second. Kelly, Kelly Olenek, 18. <clears throat> Jimmy Butler with 29. Uh, unfortunately, no double-doubles for him. Akpala, 8. Kendrick Nunn, three, and Duncan Robinson, 14. For Orlando, Aninu, two, Akiki, three, Bacon, nine, Vukovic, 38 points, jeez, and Michael Carter-Williams, um, uh, nine points. Terrence Ross scored 31 points off the bench, by the way. This is historic for the Orlando side, for... Specifically, Nikola Vucevic. This is his greatest game against the Heat. You're letting this guy plow through you. This is a Heat killer, Vucevic. If you're not going to defend good against Vucevic, 
And may I mind you, in starting lineup, nobody except for uh, Vugovic has over 10 points. Nobody else except for those two players, Ross and Vugovic. Vugovic is going to take you down. You know what I mean? Vugovic is a good player. And he is, a, he is the best player on the Orlando Magic team. If you can't defend against guys like Vukovic, you're in deep trouble. But fortunately, we had a better team. And that was with Butler and Tyler Hero with also scoring 22 points. And by the way, Jimmy Butler could do it all. You know what he did in the beginning of the game? He was actually involved in a tip-off. And he won a tip-off. <laughs> so good day for Jimmy Butler and good day for Miami. So we invaded Orlando. And, you know, Miami talking crap in Orlando. You know, without Disney, that area is just a pile of swamp. Um, I disagree. You know, I grew up in the area. I, I kind of take a little offense to it. It's a great city to be in. There's so much more than just sports at Disney, you know, in Miami, in the Orlando area. But with that being said, I'm done. Um, I'm done for the recap. I'm going to go sweep off the side effects. So um, thank you guys for watching. Um, there is no intro. You know, it's like I said, and oh, I have an update. I have an update real quick before I get, I, before I shut off. Um, I have never been to South Florida. It's a shocking confession. I've never been to Miami. I've never been to Fort Lauderdale, and I've never been to Sunrise. I've never been to South Florida in general. I've only been in the Orlando area, the central region. My cat is interrupting me, but place where I grew up, Orlando. And I never been to South Florida ever until April. Yes, I'm making an announcement right now. I'm going to South Florida in April, and I'm going to I'm going to go to a couple of sporting events down in South Florida in Sunrise and in Miami. So it's going to be an exciting trip for me. I'm going to see my old friend down there. Um, look for me. Look for me, Miami fans. I'm going to be there. And I'm so excited. You know, you don't believe it. So comment down below and I'll, I'll DM you where, where I'm going. Because I am going to have a great time. And I hope you guys, you guys come along. So that is it. This is Mirror TV signing out. Good night. Sleep well. We're going to get through this together.